What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while, I know, but we had to get out for the 4th of July. We were up north visiting the family and we decided to haul the hot tamale. That's right, the bass boat way up to Michigan. Bass fishing Lake Templeen on the 4th. Let's go ahead and have some fun. Oh, he's just having a hook. You haven't been at it? Yeah. He's going to come off, but it'll be okay. Oh, play it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Did you see him swirl and miss it? I and saw it swirl. Back. And then he came back. <laughs> <laughs> Jackal Gantarell working up in Michigan, Lake Templeen. Look at that guy. Oh, dang, sharp teeth up north. All right, we're gonna get this thing back in the water. I'd say we put it in the live well, but uh, our live well handle broke, and so it's kind of like locked in place. Anyways, first fish up here in Michigan on Templeen on the Jackal Gantrell Jr. We caught a couple here the other day. We came out and fished it. Caught a decent one on the blazing worm here and all these lily pads and trees. And so uh, I just wanted to try something a little bit different. There's a lot of grass here, just one, two, three feet under the surface. And I knew the right bass would come up and smoke this bluegill if I just cruised it slowly over the grass. All right. He's just going slow. Yeah. He's like, oh, look. He's, he's about to like jump. He's going to come back up and I jump, maybe. No, he's cruising. Now he's back in the tree. Which is so cool because this water is crystal clear. You can literally see these down trees right underneath you. As you work this bluegill bait, you just kind of give it a little whip and pause it right after you pass by one of these trees. Those bass come up and ambush you. It's pretty cool. He's blazing so good. All right, we got to have the net handy now. Big bluegill is not just a Texas bait. Look, I'm going to show you guys under the water right now. It's like really crazy. Check this out. Here's, look at that. Oh my gosh. That's this type of stuff you're cruising that bluegill over. Looks good. I don't see as much grass. There's a little bit there, but the grass is thick in a lot of these areas. And look at that. It's a dream. We could probably catch a whole bag just right here in this one little pocket close to the boat ramp. All right. Let's get the rod back out. Hey, that thing's flying. Y'all keep talking about it. Yeah, that's the good thing about those. Is that, but if you get a hit, yeah, it's gonna be it's good. gonna like be a smack. Like that fish is just gonna come up and go. Oh. Got it. Got it. No way. Is that the jackal gantrell? Yeah. What? As soon as you pick it up. Oh my gosh. Saw him swirl on it. I cannot believe that. That bait is working too good. First one for me on the Gantorell. First one for me. He's a little guy. It goes to show you that little fish will eat those baits too. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not just throwing it for the big ones, so. Like, look how big this fish is compared to this bait. And he went after it. <laughs> oh, sorry. Me too. You throw them on a stump. Yeah. Oh, wow. I have a Celsius. <laughs> We're getting serious now. There you are. Cosmic or Oasis? Um, Oasis. Oasis? All right. All right, we both caught a fish so far. It's time to get bucking serious. Oasis vibe. Bucky's going to bring in the bass. <laughs> <laughs> you know what goes with the bass? Buckies. Buckies. 
Damn, look at all those freaking boats. We can go for a cruise if y'all want. <laughs> Here and see all the boats over there at jet skis. Worth a fly, y'all. Oh, I'm about to fly there. Speaking of, I'm going to fly the drone. Take off. No way. He came That's out of nowhere. <laughs> he came out of nowhere. He got one. One hook. Wow. Second bass for me on that Ganterelle. Weston is currently flying the drone. That was good. We got some cool shots. Then that thing's going to be fine. <laughs> Even though you look like a rookie. I did. Oh, my <laughs> you God. lifted the fish it. out of the water. And then. I've oh. never netted my own fish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, you had you had not enough line out, so basically yeah, you had to open the spool. I like, was realizing you would have had to open the spool or something. It would have it doesn't matter. That was funny. Go. Like, oh, they're chasing. Cast your bait uh, over I don't there, know Dad. How you're about to? Oh no. <laughs> All right, you got it. You got it. You got it. Nice and slow. Did you see those bait fish bumping? You should get your rod and reel. Get that fluke. I am gonna tie on a fluke. All right, it's really grassy in here. I'm gonna go with something that's pretty weedless and yet still is kind of like a uh, more of like a moving bait. I've been throwing the Texas rig and it seems like they're just kind of eyes up. They're chasing bait fish. We just saw a little bit pop and they keep going after the bluegill swim bait. So I want to try something a little bit different since we've only got one jackal gantrell on the boat. I'm gonna throw a fluke. I haven't thrown one in a while. You want to kind of use something like a seven foot medium heavy fast action rod with these guys and just a I usually throw a worm hook. This is like a four rod or something like that. I can't remember. I haven't fished in like five years. So you want to just poke it up like a Texas rig right through the body. And look at that. Hook is flush with the top of the body. When you set the hook, it exposes itself. You'll catch the fish, but hopefully you won't catch the grass. And uh, you just work this like a, a jerk bait. It is a jerk bait. It's just a soft plastic jerk bait versus a hard plastic jerk bait with the treble hooks, which would not work in this scenario. Uh, because you can't cast it by all the good cover that you want to. You can't get it right up against the trees and the lily pads and the grass because the treble hooks are going to catch all that crap. So uh, open water scenarios or grass edges or just, in other words, this is better than a hard plastic jerk bait for this scenario. So I'm just also kind of feeling the line. If it feels a little frayed, I would retie. And I do have a little iffy spot right here, so I should probably cut the line a little past it and retie, but I'm not going to because I want to fish. Ah, shoot. You see what it catches. Hey, it's been catching them all day, though. They prefer that over the worms today. treble hooks on a different bait guys here we go nice still kind of a bluegill imitation but a little bit smaller oh let me break it down for you guys here in just a second Mother I just got you out of there <laughs> called it I said that looks good over there yeah it does there ain't no way there ain't no fish right there right okay I'm gonna have to get this out of the net but there you go this is the baby bull gill um, by catch cup that caught this guy right off the shallows too. There's a couple of little down trees. There's some reeds right off the side, some rocks, some docks. It's got all the cover these bass could want. And they're just hanging out over here in the shallows away from the leisure boaters. First fish in quite a while. And our trolling motor battery is fading fast. I don't know what's going on with the battery situation on this boat. Jet ski's flying by, so I'll be a little louder. But hey, we got another one in here. Jeez! All right, y'all, so they've just been crushing the bluegill baits today. Here's a look at the size comparison. This is the Jackal Ganterelle Jr., and then this is the Baby Bull Gill. This guy stays pretty close to the surface unless you reel him in pretty quick, and we've just been fishing it slow. And then this guy right here has a little bit of a faster sink, so you just gotta kinda chuck it and wind, chuck and wind. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna go down to the bottom real quick and be catching uh, anything and everything down there, just like this net. I think we are not gonna use the net anymore unless it's an absolute giant, because it took me 10 minutes to untangle this thing. So, that's the 
fun part of using treble hooks. I always have pliers on deck. I would have never got that fish unhooked. But let's try and uh, get another one nonetheless. Line's feeling good. Using rods with a softer tip and making sure your drag is not cranked all the way down when you're using treble hooks because uh, both are gonna play a role in catching those fish and landing them versus using like a really stiff rod which has no give or having tightened down drag. If you've got the stiff rod and tight drag combination, what's gonna happen is those fish are gonna be head shaking and they'll just bend out those lighter treble hooks. And so you gotta have the little bit of give, that way you can fight them out when you're using a bait like this. Boat in it for pulling fish. Yes. No way. Bud. Oh, it might be good too. She's got one on the jackal gantt trail. I don't know if it's big or not yet. Okay, so it's, it's, it's modest. <laughs> it's a good Michigan bass. It's a small Michigan Texas bass. <laughs> nice work. That was yeah. right off of that tree. Dude. All right, you're going to break my rod chip, so you need to chill this freak out. <laughs> Devin. Tony, me. You need a white claw or something. All right, another one on the Ganterelle. We moved over to the other side of the lake. That has all the... Go ahead and... Let that guy go. <laughs> we moved over to the other side of the lake where all the leisure boaters are. It's a lot more activity. There's a lot more just like wakes. I think these fish are a little bit more turned up over here. So there's your update. You're hitting the moving stuff. You gotta have good conditions for this. Summertime in Michigan. I'm gonna switch it up, y'all. I'm gonna try and irritate these north, northern bass with a nice little buzz bait. It's cloudy out here. Like she said, a little bit more chop. Just seems like more activity. And I think they might just hit top water midday. Well, that's not even midday. It's still early, so this is kind of still like breakfast for them. We're gonna see if they'll hit the top water. Noon on the dot. But that means it's five o'clock somewhere. All right, let's see if they hit this buzz bait. This will be interesting. Shut up. Shut up. Cast on the buzz bait. <laughs> we knew it. They're fired up, y'all. Lake Templeen in Michigan. Come on, first time ever, and we got us one on the freaking top water. Woo! That's fighting more like a Texas bass. <laughs> Come on, get up here. No slack. Yeah, day is fat. Whoa, whoa. What kind of short chunk is that? That dude is so fat. That's like probably two and a half pounds, even though he's got the length of a one pounder because he is plump. Holy smokes. Top water. Let's go. That was right by that tree, too, that you caught the last one off of. I literally just threw right over it. I knew I could irritate him. All right. Yes! <laughs> that is funny. On the top water. Buzz bait, bass! Too easy, right by the stumps again. It's like I throw this thing by any little tree and they just blow up on it. No way. Got him. Okay. Oh. Ah, it's a little dude. <laughs> oh, oh my bad. Sayonara. <laughs> a little bit more action. This thing's been the big winner, though, the bluegill swim bait. Yeah. Jackal Ganterelle Jr. They've been, dude, eating it up. Yeah, they've been crushing it. I got two on top water on the buzz bait uh, just by stumps. The bluegill baits, man, they've just been munching. But good luck, y'all. Hey, y'all, too. Thanks. <laughs> That's what you want to be throwing right there. That's where the bass are hiding. Sometimes you get caught in the trees, though. That's the trade-off to hitting the good spots. Oh, I have to. Nice. Woo! Oh, big hop. <laughs> All right. Fishy! Oh, net. I think so. These little treble hooks, you got the net. You said we weren't nothing. Yeah, I said it, but let's just go ahead. Oh, he's running towards the trolling motor. Oh, dude. Oh, dude, that's a good one. Oh, my right God. Right in the net. Biggest one of <laughs> biggest the trip. Biggest one of the trip. We need to weigh that guy. Biggest, biggest one, one of the trip. trip. Oh, Woo! Break all the rods, f it. <laughs> oh, snap. This. Yeah, this is the spot you wanted to fish. <laughs> I gotta give Devin credit. This is the spot that she wanted to fish. I was like, ah, I don't know about that side. And we ended up coming over here. It's like every time we make a big switch and we move a little bit, we kind of find some clearer water 
because uh, we start working the bank until we see it's gotten a little dingy, a little dirty. That's a good Michigan bass. We will absolutely take that. Hopefully it takes me less than 10 minutes to untangle this like last time. Is that up by the reeds? It was, uh, I cast it like this way. It was like five to 10 feet off the bank. Kind of working parallel to the on bank. On little gill. Yeah, on the baby bullgill. Yep. They love bluegill up north. Look at that. Dang. Family's about to start cooking up lunch over at the lake house, guys. This might be the last one of the day. Let's get a weight on this thing. He came flying out of the water. Oh yeah, he's over three. Woo! Michigan three pounder, y'all. Nice fish up north to end the morning off on. Get back to the lake house, eat some good grub with the family, and we'll see you guys on the next one. They liked it, I guess, when the sun was up high, water's warm, and they can just, I mean, the, the clarity has gone downhill quickly. It's like you can hardly see through this uh, fucking shit.